What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. Welcome to Steamboat Springs, Colorado on our 2023 elk hunt. Crystal Beachy's first ever elk hunt. I'm so excited. Now you guys, I planned this rental truck a long time and I booked a long time ago and I booked, well I better go tell them about that too. Holy moly. And I booked a F-150 rental truck. I think I got white. This is what I got, a blue Chevrolet. It's meant to be. I mean, you know how good blue. With a big old elk hanging up. Baby, it's going to be much bigger than that. A bull elk won't go in the back of this truck. The head will be laying like out here. <laughs> you guys, I had to start the video right here at the airport. It's my darling's first ever elk hunt. I've been on a bunch. Only here, though. This is the only place I've ever been. We're going to Yampa, Colorado. We're high. The altitude is a lot thinner here. You know what, though? What? I expected it to be freezing cold. And it's like sunny and 75 perfect. It's gonna be freezing cold, don't you worry. Tomorrow morning it's supposed to be 29 degrees. It will be plenty of cold. Look at Say Blue. it, say cold. Code. Blue Gabe still got his flip flops on. You know it. Listen folks, we got seven days, six full days of hunting. I had to just show you this rental truck. I mean, what's the odds that I get a blue truck? So we need to stop and get a couple groceries. We just bought our tags online. We're gonna be at the ranch before sunset. We're gonna show you all this whole week. The whole week. All right, we'll see y'all at the grocery store. We're gonna grab just a few things. Then we're hauling butt to the ranch because my most favorite place in the whole entire world is on this ranch. I don't really believe in being cremated. I wanna be buried. I think it's my family's decision, whoever's still around when I pass. But if I had my way, whenever I do pass, I'd be put at this spot that y'all are gonna see in about 10 minutes. It's the most beautiful place on earth, in my opinion. Welcome to Oak Creek, Colorado. First step, we're gonna get some groceries. Then we're going next door. Hopefully, yeah, they sell the hunt license there. Sweet. Let's get the hunt license first. And I need some Tito's and lemonade. I don't drink much, but I need something to help me go to sleep tonight, because I am excited to elk hunt. Are y'all two up to no good or what? Always up to no good. Y'all don't have any promises. warrants, do you? Nope. The whole Can't world's promise. gonna see you right here. <laughs> Y'all sell hunting licenses? We do. Perfect. <laughs> I think I actually filmed in here last year with her. Were you here last year this time? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I put you on video last year. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Very well could be. We elk hunt this place every single year. I've been coming for nine years. This is probably one of my most sought after animals to see right here. Is the badger? They're I want to see that. one so bad. And I actually have an antelope tag for Wyoming this year. So if we kill our bull quick, we're hauling boogie to Wyoming. Nice. This old cigarette machine. That, <laughs> uh, you want to know what's sad? It's how I'm old enough to remember. <laughs> they used to have a cigarette machine just like this in the bowling alley in Jupiter, Florida. Look, babe, they got some pickles. Mm -hmm. Big old looks like a lake trout you know we're gonna get some fishing tackle because we got a little stream right behind our camp Jake would be obsessed with some ties with some ties with some flies I got all kinds of stuff all of our primos I actually got my primos uh, elk calls in the bag and y'all got a little bit of everything up in here you can catch a buzz and get some broadheads let me show them what I got. Oh, I can't go anywhere without spending more money than needed. We got a license. We're ready. <laughs> Time for groceries. I thought we weren't getting a bunch, babe. Or if you go back on that shelf right here, they got uh, more. Oh yeah. Oh, there's the kind I want. You guys. One thing we like to do is eat, and eat a lot. I think we're gonna make the sunset. We got all your essentials, Oreos, Chips Ahoy. I've been addicted to this stuff lately. I know. This makes Lemonade. you have a big butt. <laughs> Eggs. We didn't really get anything we didn't need. That we, we need definitely, that. yes, 100%. <laughs> we'll try both kinds. You can't ever have enough food for hunting camp. We're gonna be walking our butts off. We're gonna be sitting for long periods of time. We need lots of food. She loves salsa. If you're getting cheese I'm gonna get salsa what do you think okay well sixteen hundred dollars in tags two hundred dollars y'all heard it here she I needs need a snack, snack already two hundred dollars in huh unneeded 
necessities from the hunting store and how much was the grocery bill? I was gonna say it was more than 200. How much was 350. it? 350. 350. Shut that door woman we got to roll. We're racing the sun right now. So I don't know what I just tallied up. It was over two thousand dollars and we're now ready to go hunt. I got these really good looking pickles. This girl is obsessed with pickles, hot sauce, and uh, salsa. Right now though, you know where we're headed? To the mudslide. To the mudslide. So on the ranch that we hunt in Yampa, there's a thing called the mudslide. It's literally what it's called. It's a huge chunk of earth that slid off this big gorge and created a giant mudslide. The most beautiful place ever. Y'all just wait, we'll be there right now. Tell me that's not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. We didn't make the sunset. The sun's already went behind the mountains. But I had to get up here and try to lay eyes on a bull elk because we're gonna start hunting tomorrow morning. But can y'all smell it right there? A little bit of Colorado beef stroganoff. I made it from scratch. I got it out of this box right here. I put all my homegrown ingredients in. <laughs> no, I did just add some mushrooms, got some onions, got me a Charleston chew for my tree stand tomorrow. We're about to show y'all our mad chaos. So I never really do this. I don't show everything that we bring. This right here is the most important, that Lakewood bow case. We fly with our bows in there, just like that. We put some clothes in, they're safe, they're sound. They never get hurt. Got our backpacks, binoculars, bow hangers, a piece for her tree stand that she needs, some more binoculars, stuff that we bought at the store today. Crazy important is my Frog Tog heavy duty jacket. This is a rain jacket slash cold weather jacket. That thing will keep me so warm. Got my thermal binoculars so when we're walking in in the morning we don't spook the elk if they are there. Some pop tarts. What you got? You wanna give them a tour of the house? Sure. So this is our living room. Nice and cozy. We have a real wood burning fireplace here. I grew up with one of these in my house, so I'm pretty excited about that. We're gonna have to light it one day. A full DVD collection. I think we're gonna watch Lonesome Dove while we're here. Hold on, I gotta tell at some a point. fun fact about Crystal Beachy. Here comes your fun fact. She has never watched Lonesome Dove. <laughs> Is she even American? <laughs> we will change that this week because we got the full edition right up there. <laughs> all right, all of our groceries. We did a grocery haul. I still gotta put all that stuff up. I'm a little bit embarrassed because we're like disorganized right now. And here is gonna be our closet. I've got my regular clothes, all my hunting clothes laid out. Gabriel's got all his hunting clothes. If you see mine, how it's nicely laid. Jackets, pants, hoodies. Let me show them this something. This is Gabriel. Let me show them something that they ain't never seen before. This is Frog Tog's new backpack. It's not new. It came out a year ago, and I used it, and then I left it here. For all you guys that walk a long ways to your tree stand, you put your bow in there, clamp it up. Then when you get to your stand... You hook your bow rope up to this and pull the whole thing up at once. Talk about something nice. It's a crazy nice backpack. Holds a ton of gear. Every, everything you could possibly need. You haven't even seen that. You didn't no, even know No, I didn't know it was there. yours. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. You can fit that me in that backpack. In the morning. This is how I organize my stuff. See, when I come here, I come here, I'm like, look at it. There's the socks I was looking for. I knew that's where I put them. All right. Bathroom. We got a big shower. Hot water is gonna feel so good after sitting in that cold tree stand all morning. And then this will be where we sleep tonight. Nice and cozy. And no neighbors for miles. This stroganoff smells so good. So good. Homemade. I like the addition of the mushrooms. And onions. We haven't told them about what's in here though. And that dry bag is 15 lobsters that we caught in the Keys a month ago. And we always bring lobster when we come here. That's like my one treat that I have to get back is a lobster meal every time we come. So we're gonna eat, put all this stuff away, get organized, and tomorrow morning we're going elk hunting. We will be 
a lot more dressed though tomorrow morning. I ain't gonna promise we're filming all of it, but if something happens and I can catch it on film, y'all be riding shotgun. All right, well, we just got done with the first full day of elk hunting and boy, do we have an interesting story coming from yours truly right behind me. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. But first, we're walking down here to this little bridge and I'm gonna take this little spinner and I'm gonna see if I can catch a, a trout. Since she got the best tree stand, the best elk spot, she's gotta film me try to catch the first trout though. Get the best trout spot. This is just a little creek full of brook trout, so you gotta be super quiet because they're only in little pockets. The spot is actually over here, but I gotta go over here to try to catch it. We're spotting stalking trout. Yeah, come on. It is so dry here. Rainbow I trail. It's a rainbow or a cutthroat. Yeah, turn him loose. We're gonna catch so many of these, it's insane. We're not even at the good spot, we're just at the hard spot. Unfortunately, I don't feel like getting my feet wet right now because we're getting ready to go elk hunting again. But tomorrow, when we start fishing, we're gonna fish this whole river. We're gonna tear them up, I promise you. Elk hunting, you can get on the ground and call and stalk them and you know try to get them to come to you when they're bugling, meaning. That's their mating call. It's really loud. I'll play one right now. That was a bugle. So they're not really bugling right now. The one Crystal saw was. We're going to take it back. She's in a summit climbing tree stand, hunting on a waller where an elk comes in and rolls around. I don't know why they do it, but they do it. So when you're hunting over the wallers, we know they'll come there at some point in the day. So we just get in the tree stand and sit. I'm about to show you Crystal's first ever experience hunting elk in Colorado.
We just got to Gabe's favorite fishing hole here in Colorado. We can see the trout in the water. The water is so stinking clear. Gabe's sneaking down here right now because we don't want the trout to see us. Let's see if this spot and stalk will be successful. You can literally see them swimming in the water out here. He's got his camouflage on. <laughs> you can seriously see them right here in the water. I'm just swimming in that current. I don't want to move too much. I don't want them to see me, but... Did you miss one? The water's flowing right here. Oh, he's chasing. I can see him. He's chasing it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. how pretty he is. I don't know what kind it is. I, I think it's a... I think it's a... Is it a brook trout? It's a brown trout, brown? I think. We gotta learn our trout species. I'm gonna turn him loose, though. That was epic. Got him! Keep <laughs> Go low, go low, go low so you don't scare him off. Y'all, she got it out of the tree. And then, got one. Can I go down there and get him? Come down right here. These trout are super hungry right now because the winter's coming. You got a rainbow. Wow. I'm right over here on your shoulder. He's right here. No, 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 no! Dang it! We'll cast again because I just saw another one hit. Oh. We'll consider that a land. I hit right in that tree. As soon as it popped off that tree, you hit it. Dang. I can see if some of these fly on that tip of that branch. That's always tiny. This is a whopper. That's a brook trout. They, that, they don't get a much bigger than that here. They roll like a catfish. A little brookie. Pretty. <laughs> this morning, I tried something for the first time this trip. I tried to locate some elk on the ground. I know if you're watching us and you're a true elk hunter, like they like to say, you really only hunt them on the ground. Well, yesterday morning going to my stand, I saw two bulls out of the truck in the pasture. So this morning I thought I'd try to go see if they were there. And holy mackerel, were they? Whoa. Crystal didn't know this was coming. Look at that big, beautiful lake. Wow. It's down really, really low too. Wow. Look at that. There's two of these, so we'll get out and walk at some point. Wow. There's an algae bloom going on too. Anyhow, this morning I got up there, got out of the truck and walked up to the meadow. And out of nowhere, the bull that Crystal's been hunting, or I think it's the one Crystal's been hunting, she's seen it now twice, bugled from the top, but on her side of the ranch. It then sparked bulls that I didn't even know were on my side to start bugling. And I got right in the middle of them and I called one of the bulls to me. As he's coming, I see one of his horns is missing. He broke it off in a fight. I drew back before I saw his horns were broke. Then I saw it was broke. He comes straight to me and walked by me at less than two feet from the end of my arrow down a fence. A huge bull elk, a full draw, was less than a foot and a half away from the end of my bow on a fence. I was on one side and he was on the other. It was insane. Look how beautiful that is though. 
And we're not even to the real pretty spot yet. I have seen lake trout, I guess, or maybe they're the normal trout. I've seen fish swimming down there, but I've never caught one. So this is day three. Yeah, this is our third full day. So we've hunted two and a half days. Crystal's seen big bulls both afternoons. Do you have, no, you haven't seen one in the morning yet. No. I haven't seen a bull in the afternoon. I only saw mine this morning and she's seen them both afternoons. So she's gonna hold tight in the spot she's sitting. Fingers crossed she gets one. You've already seen the footage of the one big one she saw. You didn't get any footage from the ones yesterday afternoon because they were too far. I didn't film this morning because I was trying to not poop my pants. It happened too fast. Literally in a, a minute and a half span, I went from not knowing there was elk around to I was right in the middle of them and didn't have time to get a GoPro out. I was breathing rather heavily. Look how beautiful the leaves are on the aspen trees. And what we've noticed is it's weird. There's like red tip ones and then there's the bright yellow ones. There's orange and then there's some that's still green. You want to go fishing or go take a nap? Mm. Remember we got to cook a lobster dinner tonight. Let's take a nap and then we'll fish tomorrow hard. Okay. After Look, we you can kill. see myself in the mirror. <laughs> hey, Blue Gabe, how are you doing? <laughs> it's nap time, folks. Well, guys, my hunt is officially over. Did you find him? I haven't found him yet, but I ain't gonna shoot another one if we don't find him. You guys, I had a bull. Are you still shaking? It, you don't even understand. It was so bad. I had a bull give me an absolute heart attack. I did film it, but I could, obviously I couldn't see the footage yet. I literally just got in. I'm gonna get my computer. We're gonna grab the lobster and we're going up to the main house and we're cooking an amazing seafood dinner. The lobsters that her and I and the kids caught in the Keys that we flew all the way up here to Colorado. Then we're gonna plug my laptop in, watch the footage. I shot the bull at 60 yards. He came out like 30 minutes before at 200 yards. I called him into 100 yards and then he just left. Then two mule deer came in, a buck and a doe, and they got in the waller and were running around making all kinds of noise. I'm like, well, heck, let me call again. I called, here he comes to 60 yards. And instead of like doing what I thought he was gonna do, he stopped and started just drinking and drinking behind the only tree he could hide behind. So I drew back, I guessed him for 60, or I didn't guess him, I ranged him, he was 60, but I couldn't remember what I put my sight on. I knew it was either 60 or 55, put it right on him, shot. I honestly couldn't tell you where my arrow hit, but when I saw him run off, I could see my arrow sticking out of him. So I do know I hit him. But we're gonna plug in the footage and hopefully, hopefully see exactly where I hit him because I'm almost 100% sure I heard him crash at like 200 yards. He was running wide open and all of a sudden crack, boom, bang, boom, boom, and I could just hear him rolling. I hope that's what I heard. So let's grab these lobsters and go cook because everybody's waiting on us. Y'all come here and tell me if y'all can smell that. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Already got Perfect. some of the steaks right. done. Like typical grills, this grill's got a couple hot spots on it. So they're cooking a little uneven, but I'm watching them. These lobsters right here give us a run for our money this year in the dirty water, but hey, we knocked it out. If you want to see some of our lobster videos catching these lobsters, just go in my playlist and go to my most recent lobster videos. One was posted in July and one was posted in the beginning of August. Look at this mane behind your head. Is it not the full mane? Babe, can we talk about the dip flip? <laughs> we should have filmed that. <laughs> the dip flip. Tell so, me about it. I was torn between where I was going to hunt tonight. I pulled out my can of dip and I made Crystal pick heads or tails. Heads being I would go to the hay meadow where we saw them this morning. Tails being I would go to the where I actually shot the elk. Tails won. I went there. I, I honestly wanted to go to the hay meadow, but I went where Destiny told me to go. And what happened? I drew blood. We've watched <laughs> the footage. We have watched the footage, folks. Actually, y'all are going to watch it right now. It's sort of dark. It's 60 yards. The bull's drinking out of water. The rest is history.
It looks like a flock of buzzards in here. Mr. Dick, are you ready to eat or what? Yeah. So, come here. You got to introduce yourself because you're responsible for what's in there. How, what was that? Really? What was that? Steers. What was his name? Pretty boy. Pretty boy. <laughs> I named it. You guys. She's in the 4-H. Is it 4-H up here? Yeah. She's in the 4-H and she raised the steer. That's what you do. And it's now right there. Did you think he was going to end up on our dinner table? Yes. I know those lobster didn't. So this is the family. That's Miss Cindy. They own the ranch that so we're elk hunting up top. This is look look how look at him right there. You guys, this is my favorite person. <laughs> If you watch my elk hunt from three years ago, you kind of watch the dinner segment with him. This is his wife, and that's Miss Cindy. That's Zach, Jeff's son. Y'all want to introduce yourselves? Tony, Sonia. Taylor. Taylor. Rayleigh. This is Mr. Dick. He's the reason I'm here. We met years, what, ten years ago? Oh, longer than that. <laughs> Hey, you're not very talkative. Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> go ahead and dig in. <laughs> Y'all, we got to eat and then go hopefully find an elk. Well, that's it, folks. You see, my face is nice and shaven. That's because I don't deserve that little bit of a poor excuse of a beard I was growing. And here's why. So this is the arrow that I shot the bull with. You can see the blood on it to about right there. And then the whole rest of the arrow is clean. I thought when I shot the bull, I made a perfect shot, but that's not, but let's see, less than six inches of blood. Definitely not a fatal shot. I guess when I released it, the bull turned just a little bit and I came down at an extreme angle and hit him high in the shoulder. The bull probably doesn't even know anything happened to him other than a branch fell on him. The broadhead is in perfectly good shape, not bent, not, the tip's not even bent. Yeah, I'm sure it hurt a little bit, but that bull is not mortally wounded. His shoulder is probably eight inches thick, so I didn't even get through that. I think I just shot him right in here, hit the bone, and stopped. And that right there cost me a $1,400 tag sandwich. Crystal had an opportunity, I had an opportunity, and we both blew it. We hunted so hard, it's insane. We've been here for seven days. We've hunted six full days from daylight to dark trying to make it happen, but this is elk hunting. A lot of people get humbled big time when it comes to elk. I'm not really sure what happened in my case because I had a perfect shot. It was 60 yards, so it's a little bit of a poke, but I blew it. That's it. We sat, today's actually the last day. I shot the bull two days ago. We hunted all day yesterday too. Just never had an opportunity, but it's been getting really cold at night and the leaves are changing. And yesterday, and yesterday evening sit was the most amazing thing ever. The yellow leaves were raining down like snow. It was absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful. But it's not that sad leaving here because we're headed home. South Florida has been getting flooded and we have more hogs showing up to our lease than I've ever seen since May. So I'm gonna go home, pick the boys up, get the pellet guns, and we're gonna go wreak havoc on some wild hogs. And I still can shoot a, a buck, Crystal can shoot a buck. It's deer season, fishing season, it's not that bad. We hate to leave Colorado, but we're headed home to an awesome place as well. And we'll be back here next year. And I'll come back here as long as they allow me to come back here. It doesn't matter that we blew $1,400 on a tag and so much money on airplane tickets and food and groceries and getting here. We don't come here because it costs a lot of money. We come here because we absolutely love it. We can always make more money. Somehow though, we got to repack all this stuff back in these suitcases. Got me some wheat thins for the suitcase i will say though right here before we go this has single-handedly been the most important part of our elk trip this is how we call crystal's bull in this is how i called my bull in and a couple other bulls that i chose to let walk because i completely forgot to tell you i let a big bull or maybe i did tell you i let a big bull walk i think the first or second day i had him at i would say no more than three feet when i drew back and he was coming to me when he walked by me he was on one side of a barbed wire fence and I was on the other. I would say he was less than one and a half feet from the end of my arrow. I dang four or five, 600 pound animal, but he had broke one side of his rack off. So I just let him walk by. And I called him in with this Primo's Hoochie Mama. This isn't a sales pitch. I've had this call for eight years now. I leave it in the closet here when I leave. That thing right there works, but that's it. This wasn't your normal video, this is reality. We come on a long hunt, we hunt our butts off and we leave empty handed. But we're really not leaving empty handed because we got all kinds of memories. 
that's it though thanks for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for all the positive comments but like jake always says it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape see y'all